in this video we are going to learn about different value types in solidity all right so let's begin uh, we have covered a couple of them earlier uh, especially the integer uh, in this in this video we'll be talking about some more valuable uh, value types okay so value types are the part of data types okay so data types is the main hierarchy uh, there are two type of value types uh, first of uh, the two types of data types in fact first is of course the value types and the second is the reference type value type is the variable that stores the value in it okay that stores the value directly with its uh, on its memory location but reference types are the type of data type that points to a specific memory location like array uh, you will get to know about ma mapping as well, struct and all the stuff, right? In this, in this video, we are just going to talk about the value types, okay? So we'll discuss about Boolean, we'll discuss about integer, unsigned integer, uh, address, and there's one more which is a byte, 30, bytes 34, which, we, which is not really that important. So we'll probably cover in another video or something, okay? So let's begin, let's understand the Boolean first. So as you know, uh, if you are coming from the programming background already, so uh, or mathematics as well, you know what Boolean uh, belongs to. But just to show you in the program, so this is how it would really works. So we can create our code. I'm sorry, Spragma Solidity, and uh, then we specify what. Uh, what version we need to go for so we can specify 8.1 so the compiler will be used accordingly make sure you always uh, you know keep the license mentioned maybe uh, MIT license that that usually I prefer uh, otherwise you get a warning alert or something. let's understand with the let's create a contract first contract maybe sample contract Okay, and then under this let's create a boolean okay uh, now boolean is basically declared by using bool sorry <laughs> bool and that's where we can keep it as public we make sure it is public so that our remix can also identify it and it become a part of state variable okay now uh, if you're following the playlist you would understand what uh, state variable would be because the value of state variable will be stored in the blockchain and blockchain can access it any moment of a time but the value of the local variable is actually vanished once the function is complete okay so now uh, let's give it a name let's say i want to create a boolean uh, or any kind of function that should start or that should just restart the service so i can create a boolean maybe to service start okay so i say it okay service start is my boolean and i can keep it as by default it should be uh, off so i can keep it as false okay so a boolean could be either false true or false right there is no other option and then i can of course create a function okay and the function would be to restart the service okay so i can restart start service this is this is the camel key style of, of using the function or variable as well so you can probably get the idea um, it's better if you make use of camel case every time contract the first letter has to be should start with the s so yeah that that's something which you can follow as a part of standards nothing really special okay now uh, i can keep it as public so that again this function can be identified uh, from blockchain now under this function i can i can do the activities like just like any other function in the programming language we can do the a certain activities certain set of activities in the function similar to that we can do it over here as well so we can set the value of the boolean here so that we want the service to be restarted right so we can make use of same variable over here and then we can say okay true it's that simple right um let's see if this works right so we can go to the compiler and uh, we can commit and we can compile sorry we can compile and looks like it worked you can see the checks and then you can actually deploy the smart contract and once you deploy this you get the 
event right you get the locks of it right over here and from the here you can get the clear understanding who deployed it uh, you can see the account from what I used to deploy was 0, zero uh, 583 that's the one I used and for the smart contract right and you can also see the deploy contract I supposed to have only two uh, you know two pointers here one is for boolean and another one for service uh, restart the service so at this moment the restart service is by default once you restart the service service would be by default restarted uh, but if you look at the service start status because I just clicked on the restart service so the initial value was set to be false but the current value is supposed to be true and that's what you can see here right so that's what it is that's how it basically works right so i think you get the idea about how the uh, boolean works now let's go and uh, uh, discuss now let's work on another variable maybe let's uh, let's work on the un uh, unsigned integer so see unsigned integer is very different if i you know uh, if I talk about sign in teachers are the one where we, where we also consider the uh, negative value as well but for the unsigned in teacher we only consider the positive value so by default when we type you and you and that means it belongs to you and uh, I'm sorry you and 256 so that means that much of a value I, I can possibly make I, store basically so 2 raised to power 256 sorry 2 raised to power 256 minus 1 probably yeah of course that much of a value I can store and that's probably enough to store any kind of information or number or hash or any sort of stuff right so if you want to store a hash value if you want to store any kind of uh, information related to number or anything that's that's pretty much enough for it you can even be specific to store or to to play with your memory space or something you can even make it to uh, unsigned integer for 8 as well right so that's where it will only be using 2 raised to power 8 minus 1 of a value right and you also have signed uh, signed uh, option as sign integer options as well again similar to that I mean it's the range basically differed that's where we can go from 2 raised to uh, 2 raised to 256 minus uh, 2 raised to 255 basically if I could because that's where it values the basically start and uh, yeah in fact remember that the, the value is always be 2 raised to 255 I have by mistake told you about 256 so you can make a note of it right so 2 raised to 255 uh, and till 2 raised to 255 minus 1 so that's the overall range and uh, sign integer can range from right so I hope you get the idea you can of course create a sign integer to take a balance maybe let's say you want to create a sign integer maybe for 8 8 bit and that's where you can make it as public and you know uh, you can say balance received and you can specify a number maybe 2 or any any sort of a number right maybe 2000 or something right so that would store that much of a value so if you go and you know um, compile it again oh sorry uh, basically that's something where we have to literal large fit so that's something which is the large value than this so I forgot to do that so I can make use of a different value altogether so you're getting the idea right that's the decimal value and that should be converted to the uh, integer and that's that would be a larger size so you can even go for 64 and all those stuff and try and test it yourself again you can go and you know deploy the contract and see yourself that what what went wrong and what's the current status at this moment of a time this is my service start boolean and again we can see the status of it right it's supposed to be false you can see that and once you restart the service it should turn to true right so if I again go to and look at the service start status it should be true now and of course I can look at the balance received you can always see if it's uh, unsigned 256 the balance is 2000 right so that's what the uh, you know these two uh, value types really looks like 
there's one more very interesting uh, very important uh, value type available as well which will be uh, making use of it very often so that's address so whenever we want to address we want we want to store the value of any account uh, we make use of address that's very specific to the, to the solidity right in order to call it we just have to specify address and we can make it public so that uh, it, the value can be stored in the blockchain you know it right and then we can of course make it as owner right maybe owner or wallet address or wallet wallet address or something and probably you can define a value over here itself by giving any random account number or you can keep it as a variable and probably can set it later as well so that would work absolutely fine even if you compile it right away i mean that's absolutely going to work and you can see how solidity once the, it's deployed how it really looks like you can again uh, check the status of the service you can restart the service again come back you should see true the balance received 2000 and wallet address right so by default that by default for any number the default value is zero and that's what you see here that's the address which is being initialized all right i think you got the idea about these value types if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment i would love to answer them thank you